You know, I say this is the kind of market that you can really root for because it's exhibiting true grit and getting help beyond those glamorous technology names. There's some bullish signs that I've seen in the last five days. One is inflection. Last Tuesday, the market arrested a late pullback to rally into the close. It saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average finish that session over 200 points from its intraday low. Looking back, I'm beginning to wonder if that was the inflection point. And then there's resolve. Consequently, we saw the formation of a lot of patterns, including a reverse head and shoulders formation. More often than not, that's very bullish. In addition, major industries closing above trend lines. In the process, they're snapping that pattern of lower highs. That's a buy signal. And it's been somewhat boring, right, over the past five sessions. Technology, of course, it's regained its swagger, but after tech, industrial's up almost 4%. Powered today, uh, uh, today by these rails that operate in the eastern portion of the United States, Norfolk Southern and CSX, they continue to see very strong weekly car loads. Financial's up more than 3%. And by the way, led by non-bank companies like MSCI, Moody's. But money center banks, I think, are poised to take off. And then there are material names up 2.8%. They've gotten a real nice bounce from building material names. Vulcan, Martin Marietta, names I've talked about a lot on this show. Also chemical makers, Eastman and DuPont. And then there's fear, or should I say a lack of fear, in this market, underscored by the trend of declining utility sector. It's been down almost every day in the plunging VIX. That's the fear index closing at its lowest point since February 1st. Joining me now to discuss Melissa Armo, the stock swoosh, and David Nelson of Bell Point Asset Management. Melissa, Woody, how are you seeing this market? Are we, can, can you see something of an inflection point going on here? You might be right, but I'm cautious. I'm very, very cautious, and the reason is because it's still early on in the summer, and we have a lot of things coming up that are political events that could happen. We still have the Mueller investigation going on. We have these trade wars going on, Trump's meeting with North Korea in June. So I don't think the volatility is over. Maybe you're right, and we're going to hold here until we rally and get up to the highs, but I'm not convinced yet. David, I know those are issues that, that you have been worried about sure. as well. Now, the counter to that, though, are fundamentals, which over the long term, that's ultimately what moves the market. The, the, the fundamentals have been extraordinary. And I think if you look back to November and that monster run we had into January, maybe we pulled in some of the return you know, for 2018, anticipating earnings. But you hit a very important point, those car loads uh, on rails. And you saw that reflected in names like CSX and, and Norfolk Southern. More than a half a million car loads in the last week. That's up 7.5%. That's real economy stuff. And that's stuff that can really drive, drive, drive the market higher, maybe break out some of those trend lines. By the way, uh, one of the big winners in transportation this week is uh, Old Dominion. Rumors that Amazon may buy them. That would be fascinating. Of course, that's for the last mile in part. And that would almost make the whole post office uh, debate moot. Uh, so what names do you like, Melissa? What do you think then? If, if someone's in this market right now, you don't want them in all in cash. So what would you be in? I would say the stocks that I like, and this has nothing to do with the market at all, individual stocks that I would say are great buys, Apple, made brand new all-time highs, Berkshire Hathaway came out, they were buying more, institutional buying, that, that looks good up to So 200. you chase Apple? Apple's great. I mean, you could just buy it. Facebook, I really like. I think Facebook hits up to 200 now, as that's well. That's the one you said a couple of weeks ago, that sucker's got to keep I, running. I know. It's been running. <laughs> it's been running. I heard, it hurt you. absolutely did. It didn't right after the earnings, but then it got the pop. Here, here Here's the situation with the market. You're right, they're rallying the last few days, but it really was based on Apple. On Friday, Apple really lifted the entire market, and it's hard to believe, except for the fact that Apple equates 10% of the QQs in the NASDAQ. I mean, so Apple really is a big part of the market, so it lifted everything. What I feel is lacking is the banks are lagging. GS doesn't look so good. Goldman doesn't look so good. JP, JPM, wow. I like JPM, but I, Wells Fargo doesn't I look good. Of that. But I mean, she's got a point are... in a sense, don't you, do you think they've underperformed based on the hype, right? Because we heard when the Fed was going to start hiking rates, the banks were a no-brainer. And I don't know that they've lived up to that yet. I think they have. And you're seeing it in the earnings right now. And if you're looking for an attractive area of the market, you've got to, got to look at the banks. You're looking at double-digit growth right now for the next at least three or four or five years. You're trading well below a market multiple. And Apple's a great company and Facebook's are a great company. But if those are the only things that, that go up, those are the consumer staples of our time. Those are the places where people, people hide. And Apple is a cash machine, but it's hardly the innovator it was in, in years Let, let me ask you on the banks, though. That's a wide swath. Do you like the money center banks, or would you go more local? 
local, regional? I'm actually down on the lower end right now. I don't own a lot of the large, the large cap banks right now. I think companies like uh, Huntington Bank Shares, CMA is a great bank. Uh, uh, STI is another great bank. Uh, that's where I see the action in right now, and that's where I'm seeing the estimate revisions. Uh, where do you start to get nervous on this market? Let's just say this inflection theory of mine falls apart. Uh, well, uh, it, you know, if this fails. Get, yeah, people will start to get nervous if we start to breach the 200-day again. That's that, that descending triangle, right. that, and that's where that purgatory that we've been stuck in right now. We're very close to breaking out on the upside. If we break down below that, the bears will have their yeah, day for yeah. a We're still months. in that range. Right. That's the problem. We're stuck in this range until we break lower or break higher. And, and again, the Dow, it's 25,900 on the Dow. We break over that. I feel confident we're going to move higher, make new highs. Lower, 23,400 for the Dow. Okay. That, those are the numbers. We got you. Last week, of course, on Friday, we did temporarily go into the 200-day moving average. It feels like when we came back, perhaps led by Apple and others, that was a buy signal for some. Maybe it was smart money. Thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Hey, coming up, America making a transition from shared misery and uneven gains to everyone benefiting from an economy that is simply on fire. I'll break down the evidence for you next. This market check is brought to you by Schwab Trading Services. Own your tomorrow.